of West Palm Beach, Keith James. Thank you, Sherry, for that introduction. Well, good morning, West Palm Beach. Are you out there? You know, it is so good to connect, once again, to connect with you in person. But more importantly, it's good to connect with you personally. Thank you to the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches for hosting this annual breakfast. Thank you, Chamber Chief Executive Officer Donald Burgess. We congratulate you and wish you much success in your new role. Special thanks also to my good friend, Chamber Chair Bill Bone, and to the entire Board of Directors of the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches. The City of West Palm Beach is all the better for the Chamber's work advancing the economic, industrial, and civic interests of our community. West Palm Beach is so proud to have you as our partner. Again, we thank you for all that you do. I also want to give special thanks to all of today's sponsors, including presenting sponsor Good Samaritan Medical Center and host sponsor GL Homes. I also want to thank the West Palm Beach City Commission for putting West Palm Beach residents and business owners first and for joining me on the dais in collaboration and leadership. Starting with Commission President Joe Paduzzi from District 4. Joe. Commissioner Kelly Schoff from District 1. Now, as a matter of personal privilege, since all of you know that Commissioner Schoff is elected not to run for re-election, uh, Commissioner Schoff, I want to thank you for your years of service to our city. You have been such a passionate advocate, not only for the residents of your district, but for all the residents of West Palm Beach. Thank you. Commissioner Shalanda Warren from District 2. Shalanda. <laughs> Commissioner Christy Fox from District 3. And Commissioner Christina Lambert from District 5. And of course, I certainly want to give special thanks and appreciation to the First Lady of West Palm Beach, my lovely wife, Lorna James. <laughs> Lorna, I love you. So I also, I also wish to thank all of you in attendance today, and especially West Palm Beach residents and business owners who, just three years ago, put their trust in me to serve and to lead. It is and has been the honor of a lifetime. You know, it could be said that the test of any community's character is what it does when faced with challenges it never expected, requiring remedies that did not exist. Do they pull together and move apart? Do they reach for the common ground of common purpose or retreat to the corners of self-interest and selfishness where what's in it for one overshadows what's in it for all? Or do they rise? or do they fall? I want you to take a moment and travel back in your mind with me to the spring and summer of 2020. We were in the midst of a public health crisis. Cries for social justice rang out in the streets throughout the world. And the state of our economy, both locally and globally, remained uncertain. Well, today I'm proud to report that the city of West Palm Beach not only measured up to the challenges exposed by COVID-19 with unremitting courage, but also created something transformative moving forward. That despite some of our darkest hours, where we lost loved ones and saw many others struggling simply to survive, this city made a statement about its future about its character, and about itself. We are indeed becoming, for all to see, a birthplace 
of opportunity. The opportunity for businesses to move here, grow here, create jobs here. The opportunity for those who deserve more to earn more, to have a shot at the American dream without regard to race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, creed, challenge or circumstance. The opportunity for families and neighborhoods to feel safe because we have reduced crime and have put fear on the run. Now, West Palm Beach might not be as well known as Miami or Fort Lauderdale, but quietly, assuredly, we are becoming the choice destination for companies big and small, causes small and large, and for families who prize quality of life above all else. As a matter of fact, West Palm Beach recently earned a spot on livability.com's top 100 best places to live in America. The fact we are a choice destination explains why we are now setting growth records at a breakneck pace. Indicative of West Palm Beach's economic strength, last year we assisted with the relocation or expansion of 12 new companies, which added more than 1,300 highly compensated jobs. Suddenly, we had the full attention of everyone from Wall Street to Main Street. Heavy hitters in the financial services industries are enhancing our growing reputation as Wall Street South. Tech, construction, and multimedia are also finding homes here. Thank you to Kelly Small Ridge at the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County and to our partner, the Community Redevelopment Agency, for joining us in bringing these companies to our city. As COVID-19 accelerated a trend of relocating corporations in search of an open community, great climate, and exceptional quality of life, West Palm Beach rode out the welcome mat. Our city is hitting historic new highs in so many different areas. Last fiscal year, the city posted $3.9 million in business tax receipts, demonstrating record business activity in the city. Despite the pandemic, Building permit revenues increased in six consecutive quarters, and we are on pace this year to achieve the highest amount of building permit revenues in the city's history. Recently, the Wall Street Journal noted the rapid development of our Class A office space. While there were no new Class A office projects in the 11 years between 2008 and 2019, there are now six such projects in the pipeline. Last year alone, we witnessed the groundbreaking for one Flagler, the ribbon cutting for newly completed 360 Rosemary, and nearly $3 billion in privately initiated projects in various stages of completion. Another city record. Transit Village, Icon Marina Village, West Palm Point, 301 Clematis, and so many other projects, too many, other, too many to name, are all in various stages of progress. With the migration of new businesses to Wall Street South, Related Companies is going through a significant rebranding of the square, which anticipates several new Class A office and residential towers. The Grand, an $81 million mixed income workforce, multifamily rental development now under construction, marks the single largest investment ever in the historic Northwest, and the largest workforce housing project ever developed in this city. We are moving forward with plans to create the Nora District, setting the stage for future investment, development, and economic advancement in our city's North End. Unprecedented wealth migration and relocations are also driving a robust property market. Investments in residential, and workforce housing are poised to bring 2,600 new units online. Two new hotels will add 300 rooms, strengthening our position as a convention center city and accelerating the full return of tourism to our city. 
Adding to the allure, to the allure of West Palm Beach are cultural offerings such as the city's public art program, the Norton Museum of Art, the Kravis Center for the Performing Arts, and the Cox Science Center and Aquarium, just to name a few. By the way, thank you, Howard and Wendy Cox, who I believe are here this morning, for your significant gift to lead the expansion of the Science Center and Aquarium. So many lives will be transformed because of your generosity. Thank you so much. Small businesses, the lifeblood of any economy, and certainly lifeblood of our economy, are enjoying a significant rebound just two years after the onset of COVID-19. West Palm Beach, under my leadership, was the first local municipality to provide financial assistance to small businesses impacted by COVID's effects. In fiscal year 2021, 13.7 million of the total competed dollars for city contracts was paid to small businesses through the Office of Small and Minority Business Programs, which I established to ensure fair business practices in our city. That represents 20% of all competed dollars. I'm extremely proud of these developments. I believe that we all should be proud. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are constantly prioritizing ways to move, to more efficiently and safely move people, not just cars throughout our city. We are executing the city's mobility plan to implement transit best practices for bicyclists, pedestrians, and motorists. We recently celebrated Brightline's return to full service and look forward to its expansion, both in South Florida and to Orlando. We are committed to moving transportation forward as quickly as our city is moving forward. We're also working to bolster our community's reputation as an education hub. We are actively negotiating to bring University of Florida graduate, professional, and executive programs to downtown West Palm Beach. The, yes. This will support the growth and expansion of West Palm Beach companies through innovative programs and financial technology artificial intelligence, data analytics, and cybersecurity, among other areas. The UF at WPB initiative is an example of how great things can happen from great partnerships. Creating an atmosphere of collaboration between the city and the county has been a priority of my administration since day one. To that end, I wish to express my heartfelt thanks to Commissioner David Kerner, who initiated this proposal and without whom the University of Florida partnership would not be possible. Thank you, Commissioner Kerner, for a job well done. I also want to thank University of, President, University of Florida President Kent Fox, who is here as my guest this morning, for considering the city of West Palm Beach for the University of Florida's urban campus. Thank you, President Fox. and go Gators. That's hard for a Harvard man to say, but that's okay. <laughs> Honoring our commitment to residents, neighborhoods, and businesses, we developed a balanced $206 million general fund budget for the current fiscal year, which prioritizes community services, public health and safety, and quality of life initiatives. While doing that, we also held the line on taxes and fees and kept the millage rate the same. I want to publicly thank City Administrator Faye Johnson for her professional assistance and wisdom in navigating us through these uncertain fiscal times. Thank you so much, Faye. I am most proud that this budget will be remembered for providing historic raises to employees in each of the city's four labor unions. By delivering these historic agreements, we kept our promise to our first responders and frontline workers that they will always have our thanks and our support. Public safety is indeed job number one. A promise made is a promise kept. I must give special thanks to Congresswoman Lois Franco, who was instrumental in securing American Rescue Plan funding that came directly to the city of West Palm Beach. Thank you, Lois. 
Having this money come to the city as opposed to the state or county was such a significant help. Thank you, Congresswoman Franco. We're scheduled to get about $24 million. The first tranche of $12 million was spent on replacement vehicles, vaccine incentives, and premium pay for employees who kept our city operational during COVID-19. That premium pay was so important to me. I spoke earlier about the rapid transformation of our city. I know that one of the primary reasons why we are seeing a surge of interest and investment is that the city of West Palm Beach remained open for business during the pandemic. Thank you. I owe all of our city employees, we owe all these employees, a debt of gratitude for keeping the doors of our city open. Please join me in giving all our city employees a richly deserved round of applause. Another key reason why we are attracting such interest and investment is because, is because we are safer. Protecting the safety of the public is one of the most important things any mayor, any administration can and must do. That is why public safety has always been a major priority of mine. Thanks to our brave men and women in blue, I am proud to announce the results of this commitment to public safety. In 2021, our rate for crimes against persons dropped 16% from the preceding year and was the lowest reported rate in 20 years. <laughs> Last year, there were 21 murders in the city, which is down 22% from 2018. Now, while 21 murders are still Far too many. These statistics do confirm that West Palm Beach is safe as compared to other cities of our size, which is a very good thing. Thank you to Chief Adderley and your team for protecting us. <laughs> Public safety also includes our brave West Palm Beach firefighters who responded to a record 30,000 calls last year. Thank you, first responders. Thank you, Chief Matty, to you and your team. Thank you. And as an additional push toward public safety in coordination with our federal, state, and county partners, I established the Protect WPB COVID-19 vaccination and testing sites that operated over the last 20 months. Now, not only are our neighborhoods safer, they are stronger. Through my Neighborhoods First initiative, residents now have an open line to my office to ensure and expect delivery of the highest caliber of customer service. Meanwhile, our neighborhoods are sparkling thanks to the Operation Clean Streets initiative that combats illegal dumping and cleaned up entire neighborhoods in our city. Since this initiative's inception in 2019, nine people have been arrested for illegal dumping and more than 178,000 pounds, that's more than eight tons, of illegally dumped material has been removed from our neighborhood streets. More investments than ever before have been made in our neighborhoods. Last year alone, $42 million was invested in capital improvement projects benefiting our entire city. Also, 32 parks throughout our city are receiving upgrades and enhancements. We are putting action into reality with so many projects across the city. Let me name a few. We are proactively addressing coastal flooding resulting from sea level rise by installing tidal valves and additional storm drain outfalls along our waterfront. We're also slated to make drainage improvements to Roosevelt Estates, which is one of our historically underserved neighborhoods. In District 1, renovations are occurring in Curry Park and to the Coleman Park and Pleasant City Community Centers. Construction continues at the anchor site. In District 2, we will see more sanitary sewer rehabilitation and storm drain upgrades at the Outlet Mall 
as well as renovations to Chillingworth Park. In District 3, we unveiled Heart and Soul Park. Renovations continue at the Sunset Lounge. And downtown streets, including Banyan and Tamarin, are receiving significant upgrades. In District 4, I am proud to announce this morning that for the first time in our city's history, beginning next fiscal year, we will provide full staffing and full equipment, including a new fire engine and a new rescue truck at Fire Station 8. In District 5, home to the Latin Quarter, we are repaving. There we go. Where are my Latin Quarter people here? They're in the house? Thank you. Thank you. We are repaving Flagler Drive, and we look forward to the development of 8111 South Dixie. But we cannot wait for the ribbon cutting for the new West Palm Golf Park. It's been so many years in the coming, and this effort was led by Seth Waugh and the West Palm Golf Community Trust. The West Palm Golf Park will stand as a modern model for municipal courses worldwide. Now, I know Seth couldn't join us this morning, but I do want to publicly thank him for bringing this idea to West Palm Beach and for leading the effort to bring to reality this significant investment in our city. Seth. Not only are you and the trust transforming a neighborhood, you are transforming lives by creating opportunities. The city of West Palm Beach owes you and the trust a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much. So hot off the press, we learned just yesterday that the city was awarded the lead for city certification, achieving the gold standard now, this is a recognition of the city's commitments to enhancing quality of life, sustainability, and climate resilience. West Palm Beach has been and will continue to be a leader and take necessary actions to address climate change. You know, continued threats to our environment remind us that we must always remain vigilant. And we must also remember there is no resource more precious or replaceable than water. That is why West Palm Beach will continue to fight the State Road Extension, which threatens Grassy Waters Preserve, the 23-square-mile wetlands ecosystem serving as our freshwater supply. And we will continue to find new ways to minimize the threat of emerging toxins. Last year's water notice to vulnerable populations was more than a learning experience. It was a reminder of just how fragile our water resources are and that we must never let down our guard. Let me remind everyone that West Palm Beach was testing for a contaminant when most other water systems were not doing so. Be that as it may, I am proud one of the first actions taken in response to the cyanotoxin situation was to appoint a panel of nationally renowned water experts. That's one of the first things I did. Their mission is to increase resilience to threats to our water system. I expect to receive their final report later this month. Crises happen, but it's our response to them which must remain clear, determined, and strong to safeguard the very things that are essential. My friends, West Palm Beach is witnessing the dawn of an age of growth and prosperity not seen perhaps since Henry Flagler first pulled his rail cars into our city more than 125 years ago. However, I would consider my job incomplete, and I would consider myself an abject failure as a mayor if this success did not touch the lives of all residents in our city. We must ensure the train of opportunity that is pulled into our city leaves no one behind. Now to that end, we recognize that housing prices remain too high for too many. So we continue to work with the private sector to bring online more workforce housing. Through a new ordinance, we are incentivizing height and density for developers that they provide workforce housing in our downtown. Through my 503 initiative, 
we are adding more than 500 workforce housing units to our housing stock. Now, I'm proud to report, I first announced this two years ago in my first State of the City address, and I'm proud to report that we achieved that 503 a goal in just two years, a full year ahead of deadline. So this morning, thank you. So this morning, rather than rest on our laurels, I'm announcing my commitment to add an additional 100 units to our three-year goal for a grand total of 600 units of workforce housing in three years. Now, when it comes to home ownership, we can and must do more to make that dream a reality for all residents. So soon, I will introduce plans to develop a comprehensive housing program that will provide education, economic opportunity, and affordable home purchase options for people of color and their families, thanks to a generous grant we received from the Florida Housing Coalition. Another issue. We continue to be challenged by the number of people experiencing homelessness in our city. We're working at it. We're chipping away. In 2021, thanks to our homeless outreach team and our partners, we housed 118 people experiencing homelessness, and we, we reunited 51 homeless individuals with their loved ones. The new Eva W. Mack Community Hub, now under construction, will connect people to life-changing programs and services. And last year, we announced an innovative partnership with FAMU, the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, which, by the way, but who's counting, is the second major Florida university to express interest in doing business in West Palm Beach in a year. Now, this partnership with FAMU will create agricultural programs and opportunities, operate three community gardens throughout our city, and expand access to affordable health food options and food deserts located throughout our city. Thank you, FAMU, for your partnership. And go Rattlers! Now, in a watershed moment for our city, in response to cries for social justice after the murder of George Floyd, I created the Mayor's Task Force on Racial and Ethnic Equality. We are now beginning to implement priority recommendations from that task force in education and workforce development, finance, banking and business, health, real estate and housing, and criminal justice. Because of the work of this task force, for the first time in our city's history, we have a roadmap that will guide us to meaningful, transformative change, which will be felt by and led by future generations. If you served as a member of the task force, please stand up and be recognized. Thank you so much for your service. When our city needed you, you answered the call. The work of the task force will be complemented by the Mayor's Jumpstart Academy which is a new initiative I started offering training for entrepreneurs and incubating new businesses in underserved communities. Thanks in part to the E Pluribus Unum Foundation's award to me as the mayor of the city of $75,000. Also, to support the academic growth of students attending public schools, this morning I am pleased to announce the Mayor's Education Grant Program. This is another new initiative which will directly award grants to eligible elementary schools in West Palm Beach to help children improve reading and math skills. This marks the first time education grants will be funded directly through the city's general fund. This is another way West Palm Beach is working to become a community of opportunity for all. Opportunity. I love that word. It is defined as a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. As I've recounted over the past year, we have done a lot. But over the next few years, we must do so much more as we continue to work to make West Palm Beach a community of opportunity for all.
And when the history books are written about West Palm Beach and this period in our life, years and now, from now, people look back to remember how, when people look back to remember how that happened and why that happened. We want them to know it was a time when we chose to measure progress by lives enhanced, by historic advances in fairness and equity and by an economy known for the kind of prosperity in which everyone can share. It was a time in our city's history when we did more for one another, cared for one another, pulled for one another more than ever before. That at that time in our city's history, we chose to march together under that timeless banner that reads, Opportunity Knocks that we knocked down the walls that separate us and built a community that binds us, that we knocked down the rules and regulations that unjustly punished us and the crime and violence that unfairly threatened us, and that we knocked down the thought that the many serve the few instead of the few serving the many. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to report to you today that the state of our city today is strong, our economy is sound, and our state of mind is sturdy, and our determination is more resilient than ever before. Because we as a community have pulled together like never before, and we all have believed like never before. An opportunity is also defined as a favorable junction of circumstances. And unquestionably, the stars have aligned for West Palm Beach. This is an inflection point in our city's history. But ladies and gentlemen, we must maintain this momentum presented to us by this magical moment. And so, I ask for your support in continuing the great work we have started together. So my friends, stay safe, keep healthy, stay involved, and never stop believing. May God bless America, may God bless West Palm Beach, and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Yes, Keith James came here many years ago as a Harvard lawyer, go Crimson and a partner in a major law firm, have, have a seat. And, and I, I was born at Good Samaritan Hospital. I've lived here many years and seen a lot of mayors, but I've heard a lot of people say this. There has never been a more perfect fit between the time and the leadership. Extraordinary times have given us this extraordinary man. We don't have a gift for you other than the standing ovation you just received from the chamber and your residents. Thank you, Mayor James. Thank you.